I'm a teaching is show of mercy and compassion. And you always hope that you, you always receive mercy from those in our society. Well, from the start of my career, commutation was the primary avenue for life sentence prisoners or long-term offenders to get some sort of relief. There is no get out of jail free card except in a monopoly game. In, in the real world, commutation, it's a very difficult process for every single inmate. Unfortunately, in Pennsylvania and many other states, governors are extremely reluctant to use their commutation powers. Commutation means everything to a, a, a man or woman who's serving life in prison um, because life without parole is actually a death sentence. People are sentenced there for the rest of their lives, and, and I think that we all as human beings strive on having hope for our future. And sometimes the, the situation for life is, uh, can be very hopeless, but we always keep a little hope that one day that we can file for commutation and be awarded clemency uh, by the governor of the state. Being that it is the power of the governor, it is a very political process. Whether they want to take a risk in giving a mercy to someone who could possibly go back in society and reoffend. Governor Milton Schapp, during his administration, he commuted over 230 life sentences with a population that was just a little over 600. So he basically released close to half of the life sentence prisoners. And now we have 5,000 lifers in the state of Pennsylvania with little hope that commutations will be forthcoming. People can reform. People can change. Giving someone a sentence of life without parole implies that they're the same person. And I don't think that's true. And I don't think I'm alone in society in thinking that. I think some people can and do change. And it may take a number of years for that change process. Um, I think for some uh, inmates, we need to have an avenue for them to demonstrate that they are indeed someone who deserves a second chance. The circumstances vary, and we really need to have a system where every case can be looked at case by case and make a determination based on one's culpability, um, you know, actions in the crime, um, his maturation at the time, what he's done since he's been incarcerated, you know, take all of that into uh, consideration. Um, and, and, and see if one can be released back into the community with, and pose no threat to um, the society. Right now, we just broad brush everybody as dangerous, no matter what the circumstances are. And um, that's not just at all. It's interesting with the whole run-up in mass incarceration, how little research we've done on what victims really want. And when we do do research on that, we find that victims are not necessarily looking for more prosecution, more punishment. In some cases, they've been injured, they want health care support. In some cases, they want to be relocated. In some cases, they need counseling. But because we've emphasized that victims want vengeance and that they will get closure, that's the popular narrative that we have. And that we, in fact, find that they don't necessarily get more closure from more punishment. Well, I think service is uh, one means of giving back. One of my heroes in life was a guy named Albert Schweitzer. He talked about the best thing you can be in life as a servant. He meant people who provide genuine service to others. And I think that's what some of the good lifers do in the prison. That's what helps. They actually provide 
service. One way that lifers make the situation in prisons uh, better is through the work that they do, through educating themselves, by creating programs, um, by encouraging other men and women who are inside the prison with them to really look beyond themselves. And, and so they create, a lot of times they create these programs that are directed at helping not only the community outside the wall, but also help the community inside the wall. Because we recognize that this is, that is our community. Uh, without the, the possibility of getting out one day, we realize that we have to live there and we try to make it better for everyone involved. But more specifically, you know, we have families, you know, we have children, we have wives, we have parents, and we want people to go back home and be an asset to the community instead of a liability. It was the lifers who provided me with opportunities for rehabilitation. The religious communities, they're mostly led by uh, lifers, inmates. The school, it was uh, lifers who got me involved in that, helped me to uh, see that I needed to improve myself academically, that I could make a contribution. It, it was uh, lifers who helped men in the law clinics. And the possibility of uh, commutation gives more reason for those lifers to continue that effort because uh, it may be rewarded with freedom. I think a person who is seeking mercy must first of all look at the victim and be sincere and be remorseful and take responsibility for that act and acknowledge that it was wrong. Secondly, to uh, tell that victim that I'm sorry. You can't bring it, that person back. You can't repay for the loss of a loved one. But if I can do something for my community that maybe help another person. The way a person shows that they are deserving of um, mercy and compassion is by, you know, really just recognizing you know, what they did and the impact that it had on not only the victim and their family, but their own family and themselves and the community as a whole. I think once a, a person can, can demonstrate that, and there are a number of ways to do that, to redeem yourself by really showing um, compassion towards other people and, and giving back to uh, one's community. You know, our experiences make us who we are. And I think I'm better, you know, I'm old, but I'm better. That whole experience has prepared me to be a community person, a positive community person. I'm a block captain on my blog. That's probably one of my uh, proudest jobs, to have young kids come up to you and, and, and give you respect, you know, not because you uh, demand it, because that's how they see you. I know that in my heart that I would never make that same mistake. I know that because I made a bad decision one time and it cost me 38 years incarceration. So I know I'm not gonna do it again. So if I'm out there teaching my children, my grandchildren, my nieces and nephews those things, and it's as an example, I think they all do. And the gentlemen that I've been around, they, they're a good example. People who have served life sentences and then had their sentences commuted have very, very low recidivism rates because they age out of crime and often we're not commuting them unless they have support systems and families and things in place when they get out. So if you're keeping people inside just to reduce crime, it makes no sense to keep the lifers in.
Commutation is not a full pardon. Commutation means to commute the sense of life to another sentence, uh, 16 to life. So I'm still a lifer. I'm on lifetime parole. I have successfully completed 23 years on parole and my uh, parole will continue to the day I die. Every life that gets out on commutation, and it's not many, but we all know that one of the first principles of uh, a community life is to do no harm and to represent the men and women uh, in prison so that when people see me, they will know what a life looks like. You know, uh, a lot of time I go give talks, uh, I start to talk off by saying, my name is Tyrone Works, I'm a lifer, because I'm still serving life without parole. And, and I really want people in society to realize that just because one is labeled as a lifer or someone who participated in a murder, that that is not the end of their life. That is not all they are. Denying people the opportunity of parole denies them their dignity, denies them that people change. It denies them their lives. And it tells them that every day that we will punish you and that you haven't changed and that we as a society will not forgive you. It doesn't help the society. It, it doesn't reduce crime in any significant way. It's a just unending, mean-spirited punishment. What I remember vividly was the day that I was going home, I, when I came out into the hallway, there were a number of lifers in the hallway, you know, to wish me well. And I was hugging them, and I was crying like a baby as I walked down the hallway because I grew up with these guys inside and I had this great opportunity to go home and be with my family and to be free. And as I looked in each of their eyes, I knew intimately that they were all gonna die there unless something changed. Men that were smart or generous, who recognized and were very remorseful about the activity of their, of their young lives, who could be a, a, a very powerful asset to society and yet, here they were, older men who would possibly die there if nothing didn't change.